Hi everybody and welcome to Garden Style. So for those of you who've been following me for a while, you know I'm the owner operator of Sunny Crest Nursery, uh, florist and decor. I'm a horticulturist and a long time gardener. And I'm back. It's been at least, I don't know, seven or eight months since I've been on YouTube. There have been some things going on in the background that I felt was important to update you folks on. Uh, I've heard from a lot of you, I've gotten emails, uh, messages on Facebook, all concerned as to where I've been and am I doing any more videos. And yes, that's something I definitely want to keep doing. Uh, but due to some health issues and a lot that has been going on at the nursery this past year, I have had to set aside some of my responsibilities just to lower the stress level a little bit and pay attention to what was really important and that was a brand new POS system in the nursery. We went from an antique register system to all online electronic and that required so much setup as far as inventory, uh, payroll, you name it. It was quite the learning curve but we got through our busy spring season with it. Um, a few glitches here and there but that's you know par for the course when you're just learning a brand new system. So it's taken a lot of my time <laughs> between that and of course spring. Uh, being our busiest part of the year. So I thought I'd tune in today and just bring you up to date and let you know that I am fine. Um, it's very hot today. Uh, I know a lot of you across the country have already been experiencing heat waves. We're finally getting one of our own here in the Pacific Northwest. This has been probably the weirdest spring <laughs> I have spent here in the last 40 years that I've lived here. Um, it's just been cold and wet. Uh, rainy, we've had windstorms, you name it. And then it seemed like as soon as we had the summer solstice, it's like a switch got flipped and now we're in summer. I mean, instant summer. So we went from an average of 60, 65 degree days. I mean, we were praying for just 70 for a day and getting down into the 40s again at night. And then suddenly, as soon as we got into June and got closer to summer solstice, a switch flipped <laughs> and all of a sudden we're in the 90s. We got up to 91 yesterday, it's supposed to be 93, 94 today and then we're cooling right back down again tomorrow into the lower 70s, which I welcome uh, because I still have some things collecting on my porch that need to go in the ground and I certainly didn't want to do that while it was so hot. So tomorrow's my chance to uh, finally get some things planted. And what I'd like to do today is just kind of update you as to what I've already planted, talk a little bit about those plants, and let you know that just because we're in June, going into July here in the next week or so, I can't believe it, it's gone by so fast, that there are still things you can put in the ground, you can still plant. Um, I wouldn't recommend planting trees at this point. I would probably wait until the fall. They seem to go through the most stress when it comes to transplanting. But if you're seeing a good sale at your nursery and you see trees are on sale, go ahead and purchase them, but just save them. Keep them in the container until fall when the weather starts to cool off a little bit. Or if you know you've got a couple weeks of cooler weather so they're not as stressed getting into the ground. And as long as you keep them well watered, they should be fine. Now as for me, I'm never happy unless I'm trying something new. So I have a couple new varieties here that I'm going to introduce to my garden. And this very first one is called Lobelia Starship Deep Rose. Now I don't have any blooms on this plant, but I will certainly put a picture there so you can see what to expect. Now there are two different types of Lobelia. A lot of you may be familiar with the annual version of Lobelias, you know, those beautiful royal blue flowers or white uh, that trail out of hanging baskets or you can get the upright versions which you can use in the garden but this one is a perennial and this will come back year after year now to tell you a little bit about this and why I chose it I kind of have a midsection in the garden where 
you know, you've got your low growers that get maybe 12 inches high. You have your medium growers, and then you have something tall in the back. Well, I lost quite a few plants this past winter. Uh, one of the coldest winters on record that we had had here. We got down to 12, 10 degrees, and a lot of these plants just couldn't handle it. But I think what the kicker was, rather than it just getting so cold at night, was it stayed below freezing for at least four or five days. And that's something we rarely see here in our state, especially at those temperatures. And I think because it was so wet beforehand, they just couldn't handle it. So I lost Mediterranean type plants like lavender, for instance. I had lavender plants probably for the last 10, 15 years and I lost a few. So I'm looking for some new replacements, not because I don't like lavender, mind you, but just felt it was time to take those empty spaces and try something new. So here's this first new one and this is Lobelia Starship Deep Rose. It's a cardinal flower, as they call it. And this particular variety will get about 24 to 30 inches high. And it's hardy down to zone 6 or minus 10 degrees. It will take full on sun. And once it starts blooming, which is about this time in the summer, this one's getting buds on it, but not quite there yet. It will keep on blooming until the first frost in fall. And that's what I need. I need more plants that will hold their color till the end of the season. Uh, this particular year in the spring, it came so late for us this year that I had a whole lot of things blooming all at once as soon as it got warm enough. Something I'd never seen before. So blooming all at once and late in the season. I've still got things blooming now that should be done <laughs> by now. But our season was just really late this year. And like I said, it's just been kind of weird to get adjusted to the timing uh, as far as the plants go. But anyway, that's something I'll be putting in the garden tomorrow, as soon as it cools off a little bit. And then the other one I wanted to show you, I am a lover of Coreopsis, and they seem to be coming out with new colors every single year. Most of you might be familiar with the yellows, and uh, I'll show you what I have sitting out here in the garden, as long as it's not full-on beating hot sun. Uh, because right now it's about noon or so, and we're already at 85, and we're suspect, you know, expecting to be 93, 94 today. So it's going to get hot <laughs> this afternoon. So anyway, this is Coreopsis, and one of the first things I wanted to point out to you was his, is its lacy uh, type leaves that it has on it. And this is already getting its buds. It's not blooming yet, but of course I'll give you a picture down below as to what that looks like. And that's another one that only gets maybe 18 to 20 inches high. And that's what I was looking for, was something kind of mid-range that's not too tall and not too small. And with this particular variety, it's very hardy. This is hardy down to zone 4. Uh, what else can I tell you? Zone 4 to zone 9. I know a lot of you like, to, like for me to tell you what the other zone is. Not only how cold it is, but the amount of warmth or humidity that it can take. But this is a bicolor bi flower. So you've got cranberry and white all in one, uh, on the inner ring anyway, and it will bloom all summer. And it has just a really neat, tidy habit to it. And I noticed with some other varieties of Coreopsis, even when I had a sprinkler on them or you spray them with water, they'll bend out, but they come right back. So they keep their shape to them. Uh, they're just a fantastic flower. And I really like them because once they're established, they are extremely drought tolerant. And by the time we get to this time of the year, that's something you really appreciate so that you're not constantly having to water them. So it takes full on sun, it'll handle the heat, it will bloom all the way until fall, and it's just, there's no maintenance to this plant. It basically cleans itself. Once the flower dies, you will see where the old buds are on the plant, but it's not so obnoxious to whether it bothers you. So I don't even trim them, I don't even bother. And it'll just keep sending on blooms throughout the rest of the season. So that's another new one that I wanted to introduce you to. And I think what I'll do now is just kind of take you on a little walk and show you some of the things that I've already put into the ground and hopefully some new things that you've never heard of before. And I apologize ahead of time before I stroll out there. It's probably going to be a little glaring because the sun is at, you know, it's high noon right now. Uh, but I got to show you these flowers uh, and talk about them a little bit. So come on with me and let's take a little walk. Okay, so I thought I would start here. This is Campanula. 
Um, and if you haven't grown this flower before, I highly recommend it. It's fantastic in a sunny garden. And honestly, this is one of those plants that should have been done blooming <laughs> by now. And uh, hopefully the wind isn't causing too much trouble here on the video. But I just wanted to zoom in and just kind of give you an idea what these plants do. And they've started to spread. They're actually going that way. <laughs> but uh, one of those plants that I really enjoy, especially at this time of the year. This is another new specimen that I'm trying out this year. And this one is called Ragged Robin. And it actually comes in a pink as well as a white. But I really liked it for its soft, kind of foamy type flowers. And I was actually smart and kept the tag. I'm going to reach down in here and see if I can grab it. Let's see here. Yeah, and this will take sun to part shade. It's actually very good in boggy areas as well. It doesn't mind a lot of moisture. And once established, of course, it's drought tolerant. It is hardy from zone 5 to zone 9. Uh, it gets about 18 to 24 inches tall. Uh, but I really liked it. And I needed more white in the garden, and this was just a nice, you know, foamy type flower. And they're very long blooming. These guys have been blooming already for about three or four weeks. But really like them, and it's something new. Uh, and honestly, you should try them. Fantastic little flower. So I had to dig my way through the back of the garden to get to this little plant. But he won't be little for very long. This is actually a honey bush or Melianthus, boy, try and spit that out, Antinose Blue. Now, don't let his small size fool you. He will actually get three to five feet high, which is why I have him in the very back of the garden. He's hardy down to zone seven, loves the full sun. Once he gets blooms, it'll start to bloom all summer. Uh, he's still got some a ways to go yet before I think he's at that point, but they're purchased mostly for their foliage and I will flash a picture in here to show you what a, a large one looks like. But I just thought it was cool because it's kind of a blue-green leaf, as you can see there. Um, kind of a tropical feel to it, so to speak. But again, something new to try, and I certainly encourage you to start trying new plants. And this is something we're definitely going to bring in again next year, um, as we sold out as soon as we got them all in. So give this one a try. Uh, Honeybush is the easy name for it. So the wind is really starting to pick up now. It's just a sure sign that winds have shifted and we're going to start cooling down for tomorrow. Uh, but I thought I'd show you a picture of this cat mint. <laughs> this is Nepeta Walker's Low. It's one of my favorite uh, all-time perennials. Extremely heat tolerant. Um, I've lined the sidewalk here with them and I've got the yarrow in the background. But this thing never stops blooming. In fact, as you can see, let me stand up here a little bit. It's hanging out over the sidewalk, which I don't mind too much. But truly, this is a cat mint that my cats will actually lay in the middle of it. They love this stuff so much. Um, but extremely drought tolerant once it's established. And it's probably one of the easiest perennials I've ever had to grow. So if you really like lavender, <laughs> this is a fantastic flower that comes out before the actual lavenders do. And if I pan over here, you'll be able to see... The lavender has buds, but not quite blooming yet. So we should see that here in the next week or so. That won't take too long, as long as we have sunshine and heat. But yeah, check out the cat mint. Holy cow. <laughs> it's uh, in its glory right now. So I'm going to pan down the sidewalk here and show you the other types of Coreopsis that I have put into the ground here. This is a new one. This is called Double Sun right there. And I got a couple more of these plants to help fill in the sidewalk down here. But this is one that I planted last year, and it has literally doubled in size. Look at that thing. <laughs> but their flowers are pretty, and it'll just keep up their cheery selves all summer long. And don't have to water them much now that they're established. All right, and last but not least, had to show off the artichokes. I just put this plant in last year and I got five, maybe six artichokes off of one plant. Well, you can see two or three here and I'm sure I'm going to get quite a few more. But as I pan down this plant, this thing is huge. It's already about four feet tall. 
but there are several plants in there. Yep, oh, yep, there's another one. Little baby one in there. So that's always fun. But yeah, I encourage you folks this year to go out and try something new. Um, something you've never planted before. It just keeps gardening interesting and a lot of fun. Okay, last one. This is actually a Chinese fringe tree. Don't know if you've ever seen one of these before. If I back up a little bit, the wind's blowing, so it's making it difficult for me to get a hold of the flowers. But they're just really fine and lacy type flowers. They're really cool. And this is another one that should have been done blooming about a month ago, but you know, late spring season. He still did his thing. I'm gonna back up here a little bit. That wind is really kicking in. <laughs> But there's another really cool specimen for you to try. This will make a great shade tree. It'll probably get about 25 to 30 feet tall eventually. Um, and he's here to help shade part of the backyard here when he gets bigger. But just had to show you those really cool, really cool flowers. It just looks like a, a cloud. Okay, enough of this wind. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this short little tour that I gave you here in the yard. Um, I'm certainly hoping to tune in more often and stay in touch with you folks. Things are starting to calm down a little bit at the nursery so I can spend more time doing what I absolutely love to do, and that's teaching you folks and sharing with you uh, all the different plants that I like to try out or introduce to you. Okay. So, of course, if you would like some updates, by all means, hit the subscribe button and hit the little notification bell, and it'll let you know when my next video comes out. Meanwhile, get your hands dirty, stay out there, and stay cool, whatever you do. <laughs> Hope you're having a good summer. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.